There have certainly been disappointing ends to the season before for Jets fans. None could touch this one. As the NHL regular season ends today, the Jets will end their stay in Winnipeg. Pride from the arms of the loyal fans in the name of so-called progress. This is the new NHL, they say. Bigger, richer, but no one in Winnipeg today seemed to feel it was better. It's with uh, great personal disappointment and regret that today I have to confirm our earlier announcement that plans for a new Winnipeg Entertainment Complex and the purchase of the Winnipeg Jets will not proceed. In spite of last-minute discussions with the NHL, the Winnipeg Jets, and our provincial, federal, and city partners, we have been forced to conclude that because of the, of the progression of the league and, pro and professional hockey towards higher salaries, the viability of small market NHL franchise, franchises like ours is not in the cards. The continuing escalation of salary costs and the lack of a firm commitment to revenue sharing in the NHL does not allow NHL hockey to be viable in Winnipeg. No matter how many times that MEC has gone over the operating costs of the Jets, they have concluded it is not a reasonable risk to take. Personally, I believe it's a very loud wake-up call for the NHL and for all of the small market teams. Hockey will continue in Winnipeg, NHL or not. We have a strong, organized community sports program that we have even more reason to support now. Will it be moved very quickly, or when, when do you uh, perceive you'll move this? Well, if it's possible, uh, I would expect to deal with it immediately because the intent of, of the 91 agreement was <clears throat> that if a uh, long-term solution couldn't be reached, that uh, we would, in fact, move the team so that we wouldn't have ongoing losses paid for. Um, at the time, that was a good investment because we hoped that there would be a long-term future. If there's no long-term future, then we should do this as quickly as we can. In the end, Winnipeg hasn't changed. It's the NHL and professional hockey that has changed. One way or another, hockey will always be a part of Winnipeg, and no one can take the game from us. It's our game, it's part of being Canadian. Our kids will always play it, and the sound of skates on ice, sticks, and slap shots will continue to echo off arena walls far into the future. The wonderful fans. Everyone tried their best, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all. <clears throat> Everybody, the people of Manitoba, all the Jets fans, and especially the staff of the Winnipeg Jets, MEC, all the levels of government, and everybody who has supported the hockey club in the past. Thank you. So some emotional reaction from Winnipeg as expected. Unemotional news release from the NHL. Quote from Gary Bettman, we regret that the Jets appear to be leaving Winnipeg. The fans of the Winnipeg Jets have been loyal throughout the team's 16 seasons in the National Hockey League. We have exhausted every avenue in the hopes that the Jets could remain, but it appears that no one in the private sector believes, after extensive analysis, that a team in Winnipeg is economically viable. That from Gary Bettman in the National Hockey League today. Now, you lived in that community for several years, Winnipeg working there. Uh, give us an idea, your sense of how important the team was to that community and what kind of blow it will be. Well, it's a big blow. I, I lived there one year, but uh, it was still long enough to get a sense of, of what that team means to the community. Now, I, you're watching in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver. Th think how you would feel if your team left. I mean, those are bigger cities and more things to do. Winnipeg, 600,000, a very interesting cultural community, but for hockey fans, it's going to be a long, cold winter with no NHL entertainment. A lot of people like that. But it was a problem around the NHL. I remember Eddie Olchek telling me one time, people hate going to Winnipeg because most of the games were Sunday nights. You fly into Winnipeg, nothing going on Sunday, nothing going on after the game. So it, it had a bit of a bad reputation around the NHL as that in that regard. So I'm not sure that there'll be a lot of tears shed around the NHL. But And, and I, you know, I thought immediately Atlanta left, uh, went to Calgary, uh, Kansas City, and, and places like that, Colorado, Denver. They've lost franchises as well, but it hurts that it's in Canada and it could be the beginning of more. It hurts because there was a very loyal fan base uh, because the team was entrenched in the community. Wonderful community support, oh, yeah. wonderful oh, yeah. support support going both ways. Great great charitable work that Goals was done. Goals for kids, very big. Uh, the wives come out. The wives of the Jets, very big in the community, helping. You know, they weren't that strong in numbers, and perhaps people suggested that, yes, 12,000 on average was too low, but given the size of the city, I thought that the hockey fans in Winnipeg were as good as any in this country, and I think that it's a terrible blow and a really an unfortunate one, and uh, 
um, it's just uh, really disappointing that it has come down to this today. That's true. And it's uh, certainly uh, showed during some of their playoff games when they got the white going and everything. So uh, it's going to be tough without the Winnipeg Jets, and uh, we'll see what happens with the NHL. No, no last-minute reprieves from what we understand. Well, fan support, when you think about it, uh, fan support is what used to determine the success or failure of a hockey team, but that has now been relegated to a bit of a footnote if you consider the case of the Winnipeg Jets. In spite of some bad seasons, the Jets fans were constantly there voicing their support. The white was a testimony to all that during the playoffs. The parties involved voiced their sadness today as TSN's Mark Bunting reports. For those who have a deep passion for the Winnipeg Jets, May 3rd, 1995 could easily be remembered as Black Wednesday because when MEC chairman John Laven announced that his group had given up in its efforts to save the Jets, some people's worst fears were confirmed. Reaction was immediate and emotional. For everyone at the table, doesn't it bother you knowing that more young Manitobans are going to leave this province now more than ever? Doesn't that bother you in the slightest bit? And what do you do to, what do you do to change that, Mr. Tillman? Lines are loaded. Please be patient. I'll attempt to get to all of your phone calls. Good evening. You're on the air. The way I look at this city slowly turning into a cemetery. Thanks for the call, sir. Thank you. I'll be right back with more on primetime sports on CJOB after these very important sponsor messages. Despite the sobering news, the Jets players go ahead with their plan for a year-end dinner. It's kind of a loss for words, really, and uh, just kind of like an old uh, adage is you don't appreciate anything, you don't appreciate something until it's gone. And uh, I really enjoyed my first stint here in Winnipeg, and I've only been here about three weeks. And uh, it's going to be hard to see this city without a National Hockey League team. I think it's uh, very deflating. It's very unfortunate uh, for the fans of Winnipeg, for the people of Winnipeg, uh, the businesses. Uh, especially uh, hurts the kids. I think that uh, for a lot of years here, there's a lot of kids that uh, rested their hopes with the Winnipeg Jets. Jets general manager John Paddock, who is a native of Oak River, Manitoba, and head coach Terry Simpson are now in a state of limbo. Oh, it's very difficult. Um, it was a, it was a once-in-a-lifetime thing to uh, get your first NHL head coaching job and get it in the place close to where you live. You couldn't uh, work for a hockey team closer to my home in Oak River. And so that was a unique thing. And so that makes it very tough. You're quite, kind of dumbfounded, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, everyone knew that this might be the ultimate decision, but everybody was hopeful it wouldn't be. And uh, I think it's, uh, I guess I've said it before, I think it's just a tragic situation for, for the province of Manitoba. And, and uh, for the city of Winnipeg. I spoke to Gary Bettman today. I, I'm not waiting around. I, I wanted to be president of a team in Winnipeg. So my job is now to get out of Winnipeg. Sure, your, uh, your thoughts on the Jets leaving town? Well, I think it's very sad if they, in fact, do leave. I, uh, I'm actually in town from Regina, being a former Winnipegger and season ticket holder. I think it's very sad. There's more important issues out in the streets that have to be taken care of than rather keep the Jets here. Like take care of the kids, like the street kids, and do some other things for the community. That it's, it's like, I don't know why so many people are like, so gung-ho about the Jets. It's like it's an important thing here, but it's like there's more, way important more issues there. I kind of feel uh, as a public taxpaying citizen a little bit deceived in the fact that uh, I think the government uh, both provincially and federally knew what was happening before uh, all this transpired and I'd like to know who's going to pick up the, uh, the Jets debt, what's going to happen to the arena and where the future of hockey is in Canada. There are hundreds of thousands of Manitobans who must have heavy hearts tonight and a sick feeling in their stomach because the one thing that perhaps more than any other gives them a sense of community and a sense of pride has been taken away from them. After 16 years in the NHL and 23 years of professional hockey, the Winnipeg Jets are gone forever. Mark Bunting, TSN, in Winnipeg.